Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we are resuming our study today in 1 Kings chapter 14, and we will pick it up in verse number 22. 1 Kings 14, I will begin reading in verse 21. So get your Bible. Open it up to 1 Kings, and we'll do the most important thing that we can possibly do in this life, and that is study the Word of God. This is more important than anything else that you can do, because the time spent with Jesus in God's Word will draw you closer to Him, will strengthen your spirit, will strengthen your walk with God, will increase your faith and increase your purity and your holiness. And you know what? It'll increase your peace and your joy too. Whether your circumstances are what you want them to be or not, the Word of God is the most powerful, most amazing, most important thing on earth. And that's why I have been teaching it verse by verse for over 30 years now, and I've saved it. And it's there for you at thebibleversebyverse.com, which is where you can study God's Word one verse at a time, three times through the entire Bible at thebibleversebyverse.com. Well, let's pray. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 21. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Remember what Judah was, right? Judah is the southern kingdom in Israel. After Israel was split, um, and the ten northern tribes followed Jeroboam, and the two southern tribes followed Rehoboam, Solomon's son. And so that's Judah. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naama and Ammonitus. From Ammon. His mom was from Ammon one of the unsaved women that his dad Solomon married, which all contributed to him turning away from God. And, you know, it it became a mess because he did that too. It started off just by trying to satisfy his uns... Well, it started off by him marrying unsaved women, which God strictly forbids... You know, I'll, I'll marry two people. I've, I've had this standard procedure since I've been in the ministry. I'll marry two people if they both know Jesus, if they both have a testimony. Who am I to say that they shouldn't marry one another? That's between them and God. As the, only, the only standard that I see in Scripture is that they both must be saved. They both, both must have a testimony that they know Jesus. If that's the case, I'll marry them. If it's not the case, I won't. And Solomon broke that cardinal rule. And these women turned their heart and turned his heart against God slowly but surely. That's where it began. And one thing led to another and it really resulted in a civil war. We're in this split in Israel. Verse 22. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord. And they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. It just gets worse and worse all the time for Judah. doesn't help that they have a leader who doesn't know the Lord, who had a father who didn't live for the Lord. And the idolatry that Rehoboam's dad, Solomon, introduced into Israel clearly had a bad influence on the population as a whole. 
we have to be careful what we allow into our lives as Christians. I'm not talking to the unsaved right now. You just, you're going to do what you're going to do until you repent and receive Christ and get saved. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about Christians. I'm talking to you who have repented and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know you're saved. You have a testimony. You've got to be really careful, and so do I, what we allow in our lives. Because what a person surrounds themselves with, in other words, what they watch, what they look at, what they listen to, will influence them. Bad company corrupts good morals, the Bible says. So if it's a, a bad influence, then it's going to influence them in a bad way, and they're going to start acting badly, sinfully, and they're going to suffer for whatever bad rubs off on them, and there will be bad that rubs off on you. And we are inundated today with all sorts of bad. Used to be, you know, if you wanted to look at porn, you would go to one of the dirty bookstores, one of the filthy places that bad people would go to, you know, after dark in the bad side of town. Now it's as simple as putting on your computer and going to a website. In fact, a lot of times you don't even have to go to a website, right? I mean, it just, it comes to you. And it's in the movies and it's on television, which I don't watch and which I don't go to. But it's all over the place. It's a constant battle, isn't it? to keep these evil influences out of your life. You have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You gotta stay in the Word. You gotta stay in prayer. You gotta pray every day. You gotta praise every day. You gotta be in the Word as much as you possibly can every day, reading the Word, studying the Word like we're doing right now. And this idolatry in Israel it started with Solomon just tolerating it. And it spread and got worse with the following generation. Verse 23. For they also built them high places and images and idols on every high hill and under every green tree. And all these things, these high places, were part of idolatrous religions. Judah was a spiritual mess filled with the worship of false gods thanks to the tolerant attitude of Solomon who is now dead but his miserable sinful legacy carries on and it just got worse. Because what is tolerated in one generation is often abused in the next generation. 24. And there were also Sodomites in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. <laughs> If you think that homosexual behavior is just an alternative lifestyle, you are wrong. Boy, are you mistaken. It is sinful. It is an abomination in the sight of the, of the Lord. God says it's an abomination. God says it's lewd in his word. He has all sorts of terrible things to say about it. And homosexual acts, back in Rehoboam's day, were actually some of the uh, part of the some of the so-called worship services of the idols. They engaged in this kind of rot. And so God's people, as verse 24 says, God's people were acting like the people that God kicked out of the Holy Land to make room for his people when he gave it to them. Homosexual behavior, sexual sin was running rampant in the land of Canaan. And that was one of the reasons, along with other forms of idolatry, that's one of the reasons that God kicked the inhabitants out of the land because they would not control their deviant sexual behavior. And this is bad to God. And I know it's accepted in many places today, including in this country. 
And you're in trouble if you speak out against it. I'm speaking out against it because I teach the Bible, and there's no getting around it. God hates it. It's an abomination. It's sinful. And it was, it was rampant in the land of Israel again. And, well, let's see what happens. 25, and it came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. Hmm. And that's something. They tolerated sin, all sorts of sin, and now they're being attacked by Egypt. What do you know? Bad things are happening. Who's the cause of that? They are. Who brought the bad on them, though? God. God had the southern kingdom on a short leash. He wanted them to be holy. They were not. He wanted them to repent. They did not. They were getting worse and worse. So he allowed Egypt to attack them. If you, as a Christian, if you have any spiritual sense, if you have a half a spiritual brain in that noggin of yours, you will recognize that trouble, a lack of blessings, a lack of joy, a lack of peace, is coming from sin that you are tolerating and you will examine your conscience and you will fall on your knees and you will repent and you will get right with God because it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. Repent immediately, get a fresh start. If you have to get a fresh start 20 times in a day, 30 times in a day, then do it. But don't become accepting of sin. It's one thing to sin. It's one thing to sin repeatedly, but it's a whole nother issue to become accepting of that sin. Say, ah, what's the use? I can't overcome it like I, one elder of a modern evangelical church said to me, ah, you know, I used to try to fight sin, but now I, I just, I just gave up. Forget it. It's just what I am. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to try anymore. Well, he was on a fast track to depression and he ended up coming close to suicide. It's one thing to fall into sin. It's even, it's even, it's, and it's horrible to deliberately sin against God. But it's much, much worse to become accepting of it. And by that I mean not repenting and confessing after you get done doing it. Get a clean slate, start all over. Put the brakes on. Set up governors in your life. 26. So the king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem and he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king house. He even took away all. And he took away all the shields of gold which Solomon had made. Remember when Solomon made those shields of gold worth multiplied millions of dollars. These things that Egypt came up and took away from Israel and of all nations Egypt who when the Israelites were walking with the Lord subjected subjected them whooped them God got them out of Egypt slavery beat the living tar out of that country and their idols so what does Israel do become complacent and fall into idolatry in the worst forms of debauchery and now Egypt is being used by God as his rod of correction. And all these things would have been worth multiplied millions of dollars that they took from Judah. You know, the blessings of God do not always disappear completely and immediately from his backsliding people. Many, many times it happens gradually. But then, you know, there usually comes a point where a sin-tolerating Christian wakes up, kind of snaps out of it one day and says, you know, things are not nearly as good as they used to be. And life doesn't have the joy, nearly the joy that it used to have. And I don't have the peace and good things aren't happening like they used to. Happens gradually. 
But hopefully you wake up. And when you wake up, you snap out of it and you repent. Because as I said, it's not going to get better. Until you repent, it's going to get worse. And don't think that you're an exception. My friends, there are no exceptions. God is no respecter of persons. 27. And King Rehoboam made in their stead, look at this, bronze shields and committed them unto the hands of the officers of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. Instead of repenting and recognizing, look, we just lost our gold shields. This country is not as good as what it used to be. Things are falling apart. We're being attacked. We're being raided. We're losing our wealth. What's the difference? Well, let's see. The difference is righteousness and unrighteousness in our lives. Instead of waking up to that and repenting, he substituted the gold shields for bronze ones. Idolatry replaced God. Sinfulness replaced holiness. Consequently, bronze replaced gold. Things are going downhill. Not that material possessions are the most important thing, or even important things. But in Israel, they were a barometer of God's blessing. And bronze was cheap, and it was durable, so he replaced the gold shields with the bronze ones. Israel is losing the wealth and the blessings that God gave them when they were walking with the Lord. They are losing wealth because they have lost God. And he's not there to protect them and to bless them. And the same thing will happen with you and I as Christians. If we don't repent of our sin, if we tolerate sin, the same thing's going to happen to us. We're going to see the joy and the peace and the blessings of God slowly be whittled away from our lives, from our families, from all sorts of our life in general. Verse 28. And it was so when the king went into the house of the Lord that the guard bore them and brought them back into the guard chamber. Well, it looks like the king at least attempted if nothing else, go through the motions of serving God because he went into the house of the Lord. A lot of good it did him. It's like so many people go to church today. They go to church and they're entertained. They go to church to get something out of it. And if they don't get enough out of it, entertainment, then they'll go to the modern evangelical church down the block because they're a dime a dozen. And one specializes in this form of entertainment or in this program, or that program, and it's fun, and it's, it tickles your flesh, and you go to that, and, and the music is really rock and rollish here, and it's even more rock and rollish down there, and, and they got a bigger band at this one, and boy, it's fun, and everybody says it's anointed, and it doesn't have anything to do with the anointing of God. All it does is tickle your flesh with worldly entertainment, and that's all it is. With a little bit of with a little bit of so called Christianity sprinkled on top to make it palatable to lukewarm believers who long ago lost their discernment. And it looks like King Rehoboam, like I said, was going through the motions of serving God. He went to the temple, but of course God was not buying it because he served idols as well. And when you serve idols, you're not serving God. You are going through the motions of religion, but you're not serving God. So just save it. And if you have idols in your life during the week, and you think you can go and worship God on Sunday, you might as well stay home and stay in bed. Stay home and watch Face the Nation, if that's still on, or whatever. Reruns of Bullwinkle and Rocky. Stay home and watch that. You're better off. Because the church that you're probably going to doesn't preach the word of God anyway. 
because if it did, you wouldn't feel comfortable there in your backslidden state. But to serve, to serve God, you have to have a sold-out heart for God. Otherwise, it's just hypocrisy. 29. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all of their days. There was never all-out war between the north and the south during these days because God wouldn't allow it. But there were constant skirmishes between the two. Neither one of them were walking with the Lord. So they were fighting, of course, over what? Well, over material things, jockeying for position, worldly stuff. That's what happens when you're not saved and walking with the Lord. Those kind of things may, are, are, are a big deal to you. And you battle over them and you whine over them and you fight over them and you sin over them. Constant skirmishes. There's unity with people who are sold out to God today through Jesus Christ. But when people are led by their own desires or what they think is right rather than what the Word of God says is right, there's going to be division. And you got to, you know, there's division between husbands and wives. So you got to, so, so you see, so the church that they're going to, so we got to send you to a counselor. You know, and then you sit there and have counseling session after counseling session. When all you have to do is repent of your sins, confess your sins to God in the presence of each other, and confess your sins to one another, starting with the husband. And then pray for each other. And read the Bible together. And talk about the Bible together. And go to a church that teaches the Word of God. Or support a ministry or listen to a ministry that teaches the Word of God. So you're being fed. And you will be corrected. The Holy Spirit will correct you. Because you'll be walking in the Spirit. You won't be fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And guess what? When you're getting along with God, you're going to get along with each other. It's not that complicated. But you see, I can't charge you $150 an hour to tell you that. I can't write a book. I'm going to write a book, how to, have a, how to have a good relationship with other Christians, okay? And, and I'm going to charge 29 bucks for it, and it's going to be hardcover, and it's going to have one page. And when you open it up, it's going to say, get right in, with Jesus Christ, get sold out for God, get on fire for Jesus, be filled with the Holy Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. That, I can use real big print for that one page, and that'll be it, the end. It'll be 29 bucks, please. Oh, well. No need to do that. We got the book. Verse 31. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And his mother's name was Naama and Ammonidas. And Abijah, his son, reigned in his stead. And then he's going to be a real gem, too. But again, God mentions that Rehoboam's mother was not a Hebrew. She was a foreign woman from Ammon. So he had, get this, you wonder why Rehoboam turned out the way he did? What a spiritual mess he was. He had a backslidden father, Solomon, and a heathen mother. Well, that's a dynamite combination to produce a son that's going to die and blow hell wide open. A backslidden father, a heathen mother, will probably produce a messed up son. And when that son is in leadership, it leads to a whole lot of messed up things and a messed up people. At some point, you've got to put the brakes on. And, and these are not an excuse. These are no excuses. This isn't even a reason, which is the same thing as an excuse for Rehoboam to be the way he was because nobody had a perfect setup when they were growing up. Somebody was, some are better than others. I get that. But the fact of the matter is, if you're open to the truth of God's word and it's proclaimed to you or you read it and you're open to truth, it'll, it'll stick to your spiritual ribs and you'll respond to it. He didn't because he didn't have a heart for God. It had nothing to do with his mom and dad. It had everything to do with his heart. And the same is true with you and me. 
Same exact thing is true with you and me. I don't know. You know, I think I'm going to stop right here. I'm, you know, a minute or two sooner than I normally do, but that's okay. Then we'll just begin in chapter 15 next time. So I'm going to stop, but you don't have to. You can continue studying the Word of God if you want to right now. Just pick up your Bible and click on the Scripture Verse by Verse verse website found at thebibleversebyverse.com and click once you're there. Click on the book you want to study, click on the chapter, open your Bible, follow along, and listen as I teach it verse by verse. And if you're a first-time visitor to Scripture Verse by Verse website, I encourage you to go to the book of Genesis and click on the book of Genesis and click on chapter 1 and begin a journey through the entire Bible. I just, I, I just heard from a pastor today, earlier today, who I didn't know, but has been studying the Word of God with me for years. And he has studied through the entire Bible, Genesis through Revelation. And there are others that are doing that too, that I hear from. So I imagine there's quite a few who are doing it that I don't hear from. Why don't you be one of them? Because the Word of God is that important. And it's important that you get the whole counsel of God so that you're not led astray in this day and age that is filled with so-called Christians who are not Christians, so-called preachers who are pseudo-preachers, false preachers, false prophets, who are leading countless professing Christians astray. Get into the Word of God and study it with me from Genesis through Revelation. And if you think that's important, then would you please consider being a part of this ministry, being my partner, standing shoulder to shoulder with me, and helping me to get out God's Word. And you can do that. Just click on the donate button at the top of the front page at the BibleVerseByVerse.com and say a prayer and ask God if he would have you contribute and how much he would have you contribute. And you can become a part of this ministry with your prayers and your financial support. Once again, the website where you can study the Bible verse by verse is the BibleVerseByVerse.com. So until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. I do appreciate you spending this time with me. It is a thrill to know that you're out there. I'd love to hear from you. Drop me an email. Drop me a note if you would, something. Let me know that you're out there. I'd appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments, I'm always happy to, to receive questions and, and try to answer them. I'm not a Bible answer man, but I can tell you what I think. And I, and I think I've picked up a few things over the last 38 years studying the Word of God. So give me a, drop me a line with your questions, your comments, and just say hi. I'd appreciate it. Good to hear from you. But it's good to know that you're out there. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long.